Honestly, I don't really know how to start this video. I just want to talk about Lauren. After me getting a warning on my YouTube channel because of my EDP video, starting to do research on my next big locale video, and thinking of some theming ideas for the channel, I just want to fall back and talk about my comfort locale. But what should I talk about? I'm not just gonna get on here and ramble about nothing. Well, I was looking through my notes on my phone, and I found a list of videos I was going to make about Lauren Armstrong back when I was making videos about the guy. And I'm not just talking about my Legacy of COD series, I'm talking about individual Lauren idea videos I had just talking about one topic. If you want to go see those videos, warning, they're a little bit cringy, then I'll link the playlist below. But I think it'd be fun if we went through some of these video topics and discussed them like they were actually going to be made. And as an added bonus, I'll talk about why these videos weren't made as each reason changes per video. With that being said, I think it's about time we get started because there is a lot to talk about. Actually, a few things before we start. If you just heard that entire intro and you have no idea who or what I'm talking about, then I'd recommend you go watch my docu-series on Lauren Armstrong so you can understand what I'm talking about. And if you don't have the time for that, then I made a 10 minute version that should set you out straight. Also, if you think I look a little bit off in this video, that's because I was trying a bunch of lighting stuff, seeing what things I can get away with with my camera and the lights I have now, testing out new color lights I have. So if it is a bit distracting, I apologize. I was just trying to figure things out. Okay, we can start the video now. So some of these video ideas are a bit old and some of them are as recent as last week because I wanted to add a bit more to the list. This was one of the very first video ideas I came up with because I was very interested in how Lauren can tell the difference between Emma and Winnie or Debbie and Casey. And those two were just the biggest examples I can think of. We could talk about how Crestfallen used his same voice for different people and Lauren didn't notice. Or we can talk about how Ember covered like 25% of the cast, even some people who have notable voices and Lauren didn't notice it at all. And then you defend him. I wasn't defending him. I told you already at the beginning that I wasn't defending him. I never said that he was the great guy. I am saying that those things that you said to him and the fingers that you are pointing at him are the same ones that everyone is pointing at you. Hey, sorry that I lost your call there. No, I, I was actually just trying to call Wendy, but I didn't get through. Yeah, wow. Well. Uh, yeah, I was just on the phone with her. She just hung up on me, all pissed off at me. Well, what did you do? It's not what I did. It's you trying to get conservatorship over her. She needs it. As interesting as this topic sounds, the answer is not so much. The reason why all this audio trickery can go over Lauren's head is because Lauren is old. He has bad hearing. He has a bad set of headphones. He has bad service. So everything probably comes out very, very mumbled. And even when he does have a hunch about something, it's very easy to get him off your back. Sometimes it literally just takes you saying that that wasn't you, even though it was. Let, let, let's make this clear. Yeah. I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out how people from the Church of Chicago could be so ignorant. Oh yeah? And I've, spent, I've spent a lot of time playing dumb. <laughs> when, it, when, it, when, it, when it came to you and Winnie, I can't do it. What? Okay. There's something about both of you that I like a lot. And I can't lie to either one of you about what I know. What do you know? What is this that you that, know? That she, can, she cannot do your voice. It was not her. And that you were one of them that I was talking to when you were playing Casey Morrow. No. I have better things to do. Yeah, well, you should have thought of that before you started playing Casey Morrow. No. I never played her. <laughs> I know you're full of shit. No, I'm not. It's kind of interesting to talk about it out loud right now, but at the time, I deemed it not interesting enough to make a video about it. So this video was going to be about all of the people who tried to reason with Lorne, but failed because Lorne is just too stubborn or too unwilling to change. When I thought about this idea, I had two particular people in mind, Ramona and Debbie. I believe both of them tried their hardest to break through to Lauren, but it ultimately failed because Lauren can't change unless he's ready to change. 
Not surprisingly, the reason why Lauren was going along with it was because he thought he was going to get a relationship out of it. Once the idea of a relationship was out of the picture, Lauren kind of just gave up and then reverted back to his old ways. So, you weren't going to have sex, Lauren? You keep telling me about it. Lauren, just admit it to me and I'll consider breaking off the break. Admit what to you? That I was fucked up? I've already admitted to you that. Lauren, just admit that you were going to have sex. It bothers me that you that I hear stuff like that and you say that you weren't going to. It bothers me that I know I didn't want to go there. Okay, but why were you going to get caught in the to have sex? When we talk about reasoning with Lauren, we don't just have to talk about his past or the sting and him coming to terms with it. We can also talk about the conflicts that happen inside of the catfish. You're going to be leaning on people who accept those tears, like your mom and your aunt, who just want to be supportive of you. But that doesn't mean that they don't think you're a complete shithead. And unfortunately, their own reaction to the things that you're doing, even though you might think that it's nice and it's sweet and they're being gentle, it's not helping you at all. So when I say that you were an attempted rapist, you don't like that. But people haven't been saying that to you for you to actually hear. Because as soon as you hear those words, your reaction is, you don't need to say that. You don't need to use those words. I don't want to hear them. You've been forcing people to essentially be gentle with you because you won't hear anything else. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Okay. What am I saying? I've been forcing people to leave me alone. You've been wanting them to not see you for who you are. To see you for the thoughts that you've had that have been expressed and that are known, that are out there. That are still continuing. It is so crazy for me, Lauren, to think that you would actually target the daughter of somebody that you said that you're in love with. It's so crazy to me. Why did you do that? So the thing with you and me was just a game. Really? Is that what you got? Well, that's what I mean. Is this, is, is this what you're getting this, this from everything the, that I just this. said? No, this is the thought that's in my, in my head the whole fucking time that you're talking to me. Is, is why would you play me like that? Lauren. I fucking love you. You didn't hear. I stressed hear my ass out over you when you were in the fucking hospital. You didn't hear of anything piece of that shit I is said. Over, all over your fucking ass. You didn't hear anything I said. Yeah, I did. You Heard didn't. everything you said. Then talk to me about what I said. Don't come at me like as if I have anything to do with anything I just said. I was not in that scenario. <sighs> you had asked me. What is my goal, essentially? And I explained it to you. The reasons why I am going through this with you. And your response is, so you're playing a game with me? The reason why you're sitting here and allowing me to go through this with you is because you think that I'm going to care more than doing just that. So that tells me that your motivation for doing this has nothing to do with getting better. Right now, I don't care what it tells you. What What are you talking about, dude? You went, you went way back. It's like, it seems like you had this whole thing planned out to play me like you liked me. Just so that you could get to this point to help me. No, I didn't. When you didn't really like me. No, I didn't really like you. I had already told you that. So you, you really fucking despise me is what you do. If I despise you, I wouldn't be sitting here. But Lauren, I want to be perfectly clear. Again, I do not love you. I'm not in love with you. I'm not attracted to you. I don't want anything with you. No, well, I'm I not attracted to you anymore either. Perfect. Good. I hope with that off the table, you're going to be able to go through this with me. It's fucking incredible. What's incredible? That you fucking played me the whole fucking time. Making me think that you fucking liked me. 
I don't like you, but I am helping you. And now you're trying to pick a fight with me. At the end of the day, even though it was a nice gesture for many people to try, it was kind of pointless. Lauren has his set of ways that he wants to do things and he's gonna do them the way he's gonna do them. The reason why this video wasn't made was because I just didn't get to it. So one thing I'm really into is like math and data collection and Excel sheets. I love Excel sheets. Because of this, I thought of the idea of making a video where I just talk about a ton of statistical stuff about Lauren. Some of it was related to his time on TCAP, but most of it was going to be related to the catfishing stuff. And you can probably already see the big issue with that. The reason why this video wasn't made was because there is just too many calls. Some have not released yet and some are just lost to the ether never to be found again. If I was able to guarantee that I have all of the calls, then I would totally be down for spending like two months just calculating things and putting them all in Excel sheets, but I can't be sure, so that's why the video wasn't made. I don't have any stats about Lauren and the catfishing, but here is an example stat about my Legacy of COD series that can give you a picture of what it was trying to be. If you take the watch time of every video in the Legacy of COD series, and yes that does include the trailer and the recap, you get a total of 12 hours, 15 minutes, and 7 seconds of watch time. To compare that to something similar, Geo Samuel's Chris Chan documentary is 52 hours, 7 minutes, and 4 seconds long. Or, 2 days, 4 hours, 7 minutes, and 40 second minutes long. And doing some calculations, I've only covered 23% of ground that he has. I have a lot of work to do. Poetry Slam is exactly what it sounds like. I wanted to take some of Lauren's poems and analyze them, see if they hold up to a good writing standard. The reason why this video wasn't made was because I didn't have the time to make it, but like, Lauren's poems are also very, very simple. I think it's best that we look at an example. This is Lauren's goodnight poem, saying goodnight to the internet because he is about to log off. Now I lay me down to rest. I choose the pillow that I like best. I hope you had a good day just like me. And when you close your eyes, I hope you get good sleep. Tomorrow will come and I'll have another show. Those of you that don't like it, you can just go. Because I don't want to hear your mouth or listen to your crap. I spoke my mind to the subject and that is that. For those of you that are supportive and cheer me on with a guiding light, I wish every one of you a very good night. There's not really much to say about it because of how simple it is. And there's nothing wrong with a simple poem. I love simple poems. But there's really nothing to chew on. No substance with the poem. Lauren could have just uploaded a video where he's talking about how he doesn't like saying the same crap over and over again. And it would be exactly like this poem. The only difference is that it didn't rhyme. That's all I got. I literally cannot think of anything else to say. Now this one is a very old idea. In this video, I wanted to talk about all the people who were inspired by Derek, so that would be the therapist, the doctor, Gigi, and talk about how similar they were to each other. If you want your own DIY Derek clone, all you need is a male figure that is close to a female figure that Lauren is interested in. That's actually really it. You don't need the male figure to have a voice or to talk. Just the idea of a man trying to get with Lauren's woman is enough for Lauren to start raging. I don't know why this video was scrapped, maybe because I just didn't have the time, so I'll put that as the reason, but it's an interesting idea. Okay, this one's a pretty quick one. I wanted to do a video about Lauren and all the legal battles he's gotten himself into, including the one with him and NBC. And the reason why this video wasn't made was because I did make the video. I made it all the way back in Lormus, and I think it's pretty good, so you should go watch it. When I first got into Laurenography, one thing that fascinated me was this universe that Lauren created because all of it was fake. It was almost like he was living in his own matrix where everything around him was specifically crafted to keep him there. Like you have the fact that he's a registered sex offender so he can't just live wherever he wants. He's stuck in that rundown trailer. The fact that he's not willing to go and talk to other people. He kind of just stays to himself and like Roy and then his mom. And then of course there are the catfishes and his willing participation in these relationships that he knows is fake. I just really enjoyed thinking about this like its own universe, like with its own story and characters. It made things a lot more interesting for me. And the reason why this video didn't get made was because I think I already did make it. I think I made it very poorly, but I do remember talking about this somewhere. Very, very simple. This was going to be me ranking some of the Lauren Catfish on a tier list. I love tier lists, I love making them, I love ranking things, and I love debating over them too. The reason why this video wasn't made was because it was made. It's actually sitting in my computer right now. 
The reason why the video never got posted was because it was supposed to go to my second channel, but I don't remember my password and I can't get into it. Since we're talking about it, I might as well show you the end result of my tier list and show you where everyone was placed and why I placed them there. It's important to note that I was ranking the actual character, not the catfish themselves. So I wasn't ranking Ember, I was ranking Emma, the character. I also got rid of the D and F tiers because I didn't think any of them were that bad. To begin, the only person in C tier is Casey. Casey's had some good moments like post-op pummeling and the TSA call, but I do believe that both Debbie and Winnie are just better versions of Casey. Casey had to walk for Debbie and Winnie to run. I still really enjoy Casey calls, I don't hate Casey at all, I just think that people rank higher than her. Honestly, the only reason Angelo is on this list is because I wanted 20 people to round out the list. Rhoda is very strange because nobody likes to listen to the majority of her calls for good reason, but there are some great and funny times with Rhoda like the time she ate the pot brownie. Everybody loves Matilda and the reason why she isn't placed higher is because there isn't enough of her. Emma served as my starting place for the tier list. In the beginning she played a very important role, that being Lauren's best friend. There had to be at least one person in Lauren's corner or Lauren wouldn't go through the shenanigans he went through, and that person was Emma. Or at least that's what we thought. Turns out Lauren would just talk to anybody because he's pretty lonely. So that mixed with the fact that Ember started to play as Winnie more, made Emma kind of drift in the background behind everybody else. Now for the A tier, Roy's up here because who doesn't love Roy? His image alone is why he deserves the spot. I mean everyone seems to just love Roy and hate the other brother. These next four are kind of similar which is why they're all next to each other. They all play a very small role and yet Lauren gets so angry about all of them. The only reason why the therapist isn't above the doctor is because the doctor got the most mileage out of everybody. And the Michelle Simpson stuff is pretty good but I still think the doctor overwins everybody. I absolutely love Victor to death. There's not really much you can say about him, he's just a very funny side character that I enjoy listening to. The reason why Will is an A tier and not S tier is because I just haven't heard a ton of the calls he's in. I feel like Will is very funny and I think he's a great adversary for Lauren. Of course you can't have Will without Jamie Amy, and Jamie Amy is fantastic. Who knew you can get so much mileage out of a text to speech program? Next is Winnie and I gave her her own tier because I couldn't place her in S tier but I also couldn't just place her in A tier. I love Winnie a lot but I don't think she's that S tier material so she just gets her own tier right in the middle. Now for the S rank, we're going to start from the top and work our way down. Ramona is absolutely perfect, there's not really anything I can say that's wrong with her. Ramona and Lauren's relationship was the most real relationship and I enjoy that greatly because I love a good bit of romance in my stories. Honestly, I think Debbie and Ramona could be switched out with one another. The only reason why I put Ramona ahead is because I just remember listening to a ton of Ramona phone calls. Blue Boy's Casey is basically a rerun of all the characters that came before her, and it worked very very well, giving us some great moments. Dan is the perfect funny straight man for any situation, and the only reason why Paul is ranked under Dan is because we don't get enough of him. Last and certainly not least is Jesse. If you don't know, Jesse had the lovely opportunity to troll Lorne, or at least someone that sounds kind of like Lorne, and she did a pretty awful job. It wasn't very funny, it wasn't productive. For like 90% of the time, Jessie didn't even know if she was talking to the real Lauren or not. I actually don't even know if she still believes that she was talking to the real Lauren Armstrong. And if she does still believe that she was talking to Lauren, then where is that content? Why hasn't she personally released any of it? She continuously leaked everything like the fact that she was actually talking to Lauren Armstrong. She was willing to disrupt and sabotage any other troll that was going on just to get her way. And it's a million times more entertaining if you view it like Jesse is the one being trolled and not Lorne. If you look through it like that, then Jesse got trolled pretty hard and it's a very entertaining watch. But from Jesse's point of view, this was absolutely terrible. So this was a very long time ago. I remember making this video where I talk about Lorne and his relationships and how he handles them and I released it on Valentine's Day, I think. And it was a pretty good video. This video was going to be a sequel to that video where I talk about the other side characters and their relationships like between Dan and Emma. Romance and relationship stuff is something I'm always interested in when I'm consuming media so I did enjoy making that video and this video would have been very fun to make too. The reason why I didn't make this video, obviously because it's not Valentine's Day. Did you know that Lauren Armstrong had a YouTube channel? Of course you knew that, but it's still kind of crazy to think about. Like, imagine being around the time Lauren was active on his YouTube channel. You can watch a video, leave a comment, and you can see Lauren actually respond. 
This video was just going to be me going through Lauren's channel, talking about some of the videos he made and why he made them, talking about some of the comments he responded to and why he responded to them. I think it would have been a very fun video and I don't know why it wasn't made because it's a pretty good idea. So I remember coming up with this idea around the time the first Legacy of COD video hit one year old. Basically, I wanted to do the entire Legacy of COD video series again from the ground up. I didn't know if I wanted to do this either 5 or 10 years from now, but I really liked the idea of just going back, starting from scratch, and taking everything we learned from then and doing it again. Because we learned a lot about Lauren in this year, and we're still learning more, so why not we just do it again? Obviously, the reason why this video hasn't been made yet is because there hasn't been enough time. You gotta give it more time. It's gotta be like 5 or 10 years before you can even think about making a video like this. But I still kind of like the idea, so we'll see what happens when the time comes. Okay, I actually really, really love this idea. When I was first getting into Lauren Armstrong, I was listening to Andrew Burkett, just like everybody else does when they first get into Lauren Armstrong. There was one thing he brought up multiple times on stream, and hopefully I can find an example, but he liked to call it the time token. Basically, the time token was Andrew's special way of saying, if there was a time and place you could be to watch Lauren like a fly on a wall, where would you go? I have decided where to use my time token. Oh, uh, I, uh, oh this is interesting. Go on. Yes. Uh, uh, now, I think everybody has already done that. I'm the only one who hasn't. Tiffany, you, just no. to recap, <laughs> you were going to use it at the karaoke board? I, I think I wanted to use it at karaoke, yeah. I wanted okay, to and Amanda? <laughs> Oh, um, I would want to use that at when Lauren is talking to his probation officer. Oh, yes, that would be a good. her about oh, yeah. <laughs> his relationship with the, the actress who helped get him arrested. I think that would be. Yes. I want to see that conversation. Yes. I think um, I had a few, but mine had, uh, my, mine's know. very predictable. It had been just the first time he was talking to Kayla in his, on his computer. Well, I that thought. Would be there too. I thought about I want to be in the motel room with him and Tony at the fair. That's where I want. Wow. That's a great one. Yes. Yeah. It was a very interesting idea and I wanted to do a kind of cool video about it. The idea of the video was to ask a bunch of people this question and then to put all of their answers into one video, kind of like a montage. I was even thinking about making a special coin that would be falling in the background while people gave their answer on where they wanted to be if they could just watch the Lorne event. And I still want to know your answer where you think you would be if you could choose any point in time, what Lauren event would you like to watch? For me, I think I'm going to keep it simple and say that I want to see any time Lauren just hangs up on the phone after he's been raging at a catfish. Like, I just want to see what he does. Does he just sit there? Does he walk around? Does he go do yard work? What, like, what does he do when he hangs up? And he knows that like the catfish are going to call him. So how long does it take for a catfish to call him? Or vice versa, how long does it take for Lauren to call the catfish again? The reason why this video wasn't made was because I was a pretty small channel at the time, so I didn't think I'd get enough answers to put in a video. I would say let's do it now, but I'm kind of busy, so maybe in the future. I still really love this idea. This video was going to be all about redemption. Is there redemption for Lauren Armstrong? And if there is, what does it look like? When we talk about redemption, there are two ways I think we can split it. Personal redemption and public redemption. Public redemption is what it sounds like. It's the public redeeming you and accepting you back despite all the things you've done in the past. Personal redemption is a redemption you do inside of you. If you think you've done something wrong, what do you think you have to do to redeem yourself? There is absolutely no public redemption for Lauren Armstrong. The point of Lauren was to be an example. That's why he got caught on To Catch a Predator. That's the biggest example. There's no way I can see Lauren being redeemed in the public eye without losing that message that To Catch a Predator had. That there's dangerous people online who are willing to take advantage of your kids. Plus that's not even mentioning the thousands of hours of calls online showing Lauren how he's abusive and how he doesn't change. He still thinks that he did nothing wrong during this thing. When it comes to personal redemption, you can't really take that away from somebody because it's their own redemption. If they feel like they redeemed themselves, then that's kind of it. But with Lauren, I don't think he's personally redeemed himself. If we think about what that means to Lauren, maybe the first step is him getting out of sex offender class. Another way I think Lauren sees personal redemption is through getting into a relationship. If he gets into a relationship, then everything should be fine, right? The problem is that he's not willing to get into a relationship. He's too stubborn to actually go talk to a real person, and if he does, that person will figure out very quickly that he's very abusive. 
There's also the fact that he still does think that there was like this kind of setup with Chris Hansen and that he was framed incorrectly. I don't know all of what you because I haven't read it in a long time. So I'm just taking pics and sending it to you, but dot, 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 dot. If you've read the part yet about perverted justice going against court orders to hand over evidence to computers so they could be examined, then when the authorities go to finally get the computers, they all just happen to crash. That alone tells everything. There's a lot more for you to read, and you'll see that there's not too much that was right with their behavior. Casey says, but that was just from an article. There isn't proof of any of that actually happening. I don't know, it just doesn't seem to hold much weight. Whatever went on behind the scenes doesn't really matter to me much since it's all over now. I still think they provided a good service to the community. Lauren says, the one that had the information was volunteer for perverted justice. Do you want to read more tonight or save it for tomorrow? Casey says, I only want to read the stuff that has actual evidence. Then Lauren says, you say you're keeping an open mind, but it seems like you don't want to believe that they did anything wrong. Did you know that they had child porn on their computers or that Von Erk did some weird dating thing on some site that I can't remember the name of, but that he tried to convince the mother to let the daughter get involved? The mother put that on her, put that on her comment section on her profile. You want to read only stuff with evidence, but when it comes from someone from Inside Perverted Justice, it's pretty much proof considering there's no other way someone could find out so much information. All I can show you is what I have. Some is from court stuff, some is from corrupted justice, but they could have provided a good service if it was someone that actually believed in what they were doing. Von Erk did not. He said it himself that he didn't like kids. He just liked attention and wanted people to work his way or he would throw a fit. $100,000 per episode is a hell of an incentive to do whatever it takes to get the job done. Yeah, when it comes to personal redemption, Lauren has a very, very long way to go. And it seems that he's just walking backwards. The reason why this video wasn't made was because I just didn't have the time to make it. But it was still fun to talk about it here. So this video was a bit too dark for my taste. But I was planning on talking about Lauren and the idea of him himself. I mean, it is kind of a reasonable thought. You're caught doing the worst thing imaginable on live TV. And there was even one person who decided to go that route. There's two reasons why this video wasn't made. Again, the first one being that it was a bit too dark for my taste. Even though we talk about some crazy things, I still like to keep it lighthearted. The second reason why the video wasn't made was because this topic is pretty clear. Lauren just won't do it. Not including Jamie, Amy, and Blue Boys Casey because I haven't heard all those calls yet, I can recall three times where the topic of him himself come up. The first time was when the cops were called on Lauren during the Ramona call. During the confrontation, the officer said that he got a call saying that Lauren might do something crazy because he was drinking and yelling at Ramona. Lauren then proudly says that he wasn't going to do anything like that because that's just not him. Hello? Hi, my name is Trooper the State Police. Hi. Um, hi, so I, we got a phone call from some character named Nick Bagler that you and uh, Mr. Armstrong here had broken up and that he was, I guess, Nick's thoughts. Oh my God! No, so I, don't believe I guess I just want to—I just want to confirm with you right now that you—I mean, you was, you're obviously speaking with him. There's no concern on your end of this. I will say this: he is the least likely person to ever commit from everything he's ever told me. The second time was in a Winnie call, and hopefully I can find it. But it was just Lauren saying that he would never go through with that. Yeah, and I okay, did. Okay, I'm gonna tell that. Okay, good. Oh my god, what did you do? What if you die? I'm myself. Matilda said to tie a sock above my wrist so the blood doesn't come oh. out. Oh, Can god, I please use these tube socks? Yes, yes, of course. Use whatever you have to. Oh my god, I can't get there fast. What if you die? I'm myself so we can die together. Just to <laughs> shut up, Lauren. That's fucking stupid. The third and final time it was mentioned is the most interesting. Lauren and Debbie were talking about how Lauren loves to just drink and drive all the time. As I remember, and hopefully I can find this call too, but Debbie asked Lauren what would happen if he drove home drunk and killed a family. Lauren surprisingly said that he wouldn't be able to handle the guilt and he would have to do the deed. Debbie then pointed out that he probably wouldn't have enough time to do that and he would be arrested shortly after and they kind of just move on with the conversation afterwards. So you're, you're saying that you want to drink 
because in my eyes, you're thinking that in my eyes, that makes you a bad boy. Yeah. So then you go and do it when every single consequence in the world is up against you. Yeah, I know it's stupid. Well, how is that worth it, though? Somebody that you don't even know, really. Maybe that, I guess maybe that tells you how much I want to get to know you. Well, I, that's that's ridiculous. You should never put yourself at risk for someone else like that. And not only, you know, like we said, not only are you putting yourself at risk, but you're putting everyone else at risk at risk too when you're doing it. That's probably that's my biggest fucking problem is putting everybody else at risk. I killed somebody it would fucking kill me if I killed someone yeah well they would kill them first and then you'd be a big fucking crybaby after saying oh I didn't even mean to do it I didn't want to no I wouldn't get a chance to say that I would kill myself right after well you know what a lot of times a lot of times people aren't successful doing that and I guarantee you you wouldn't be able to so whatever you tried, you would just you would just go to the hospital for a, p- a couple of days. They'd throw you out and put you in jail. All the all the fucking drink a ton. Jesus Christ! In reality, Lauren is just the type of guy who wouldn't even think about that. So I kind of get the feeling that Winnie isn't liked around these parks. And I can understand why Winnie's voice can get pretty annoying at times and she can make things kind of all about herself sometimes as well. But I think there's a lot to love about Winnie and that's what this video was going to be about. Winnie is basically the female version of Lauren. She kind of does whatever she wants with no regards to anyone around her. She has a very terrible understanding of all types of relationships just like Lauren. She's unable to change and improve herself just like Lauren. And just all around, she's a pretty crazy person. Winnie was built specifically to see how much Lauren can handle. Like Winnie cheats on Lauren, disrespects Lauren on every level, and yet Lauren just stays there for some reason. Actually, the only time Lauren seriously thought about breaking up with Winnie was when he had another woman on standby, which was Debbie. Not only that, but Winnie has these clarity moments where her brain isn't so scattered and it's very focused. This is really when she shines because she can do something that Lauren can't. Admit that she's just a terrible person and she's probably never going to change. Like, yeah, Lorna, I do drugs, I cheat on you, and I hate Emma because she's Mexican. What are you going to do about it? And that is a good question. What did Lauren do about it? Nothing. He yelled for no reason because he knew he wasn't going to break up with Winnie. We also have to acknowledge how funny Winnie is and how most of the situations she gets in are ridiculous. I don't know, I just really like Winnie. It's when the sitcom of everything really came into place. The reason why that video wasn't made was because of time. You said, do you really want me to completely stop drinking? Yes, moron, that's what I've been saying for months and months and months. You don't get it. You don't have a problem, but you can't stop no matter how hard you try. You don't need help, (laughs) but you gave up on AA. You're in denial. I'm not in denial. I have a drug problem. I'm not even working on it because I like being fucking high. You have an alcohol problem. You're not going to work on it. You're just going to hide it. I don't like that. And that's not what I'm about. And uh, I hope you have a really fun alcoholic life with another alcoholic who'll put up with that shit. Don't give up on me. If you love me, why would you just leave me hanging? Why would you just leave me like I don't mean anything to you? Because I tried with you. You've asked me for chances before, and I've given 11 of them. This would have been 12, but I stopped myself after I counted 11. You do it every time. It's not ever going to change, and neither are you. Okay, we all know that this video is going to be made, and it'll probably be done around Lauren Miss, but like, we can still talk about it, right? I'm very excited to make these videos because Jamie, Amy, and Casey are definitely something else. The reason why I got invested in all of this was because of Ramona and Lauren. The relationship drama was pretty good, and I kind of feel that energy right now with Casey and Jamie. Also, I think the story is pretty entertaining. What Casey gets Lauren to do is pretty funny. Like this man for real drove to the airport thinking that he was going to pick up Casey. 
He also got on a web call thinking that he was going to see Casey, but instead saw a blur the entire time. I truly didn't think that we can make things interesting, let alone more interesting, but I cannot wait until Lauren Miss comes around and I make these videos. So I thought about this a couple weeks ago, and the reason why it's not a video is because this is just an idea I thought of. But Lauren really likes to control things, almost like he's a director of a stage play. You can hear this most during the Casey and Winnie calls, but Lauren would just direct people and tell them what to do. Call Emma and Dan. Dan, you go do this. Emma, you go do that. Emma and Dan need to be together, and me and Casey need to be together. Not only that, but if you break out of the mold that Lauren created for you, he gets very unhappy. A good example of this is when Lauren is bashing Casey because Casey was being mean to Emma. It's very hard for Lauren to fathom the idea, the reality that Casey just might not like Emma. But Lauren has to be in control and things have to be a certain way for things to go smoothly. What I also love about this topic is the fact that Lauren slowly loses more and more control as the time goes on. Now go and listen to Jamie, Amy, or Blue Boys Casey and you can hear the both of them telling him to just shut the f up because they don't care. They're going to do whatever they want and Lauren's just going to sit there because Lauren can't do anything to stop them. And I think that's pretty funny. So this video is another just random idea I had so it wasn't really a video, just something I wanted to talk about. But like, Lauren is a terrible friend. I got this idea when I was thinking about how Lauren likes to just go on mute and listen to other people's conversations. Like, that's, that's kind of scummy. And to be fair, Lauren's friends aren't really the best either, but Lauren always knows how to take it up a notch. Here's another video idea that wasn't supposed to be a video, but actually this one was supposed to be a comment. I forgot what live stream I was listening to, but I was listening to one and I typed up this little nice paragraph about how Lauren is a cheater and a terrible person. But I didn't end up posting that comment because I fell asleep, so now I'm going to tell you about it. Lauren being a cheater is an idea that kind of lives in the back of my head despite it being a pretty egregious thing. I think cheating is one of the worst things you can do in a relationship, and Lauren does it a lot. Firstly, we can start with Kayla. Lauren cheated on her the day before she was going to meet this child. One time when Lauren was recounting the night of the sting, Lauren said that the day before the sting, he actually hooked up with another woman. This person apparently was just some random girl he picked up at a random bar and they had sex. Nobody believed that this happened, and if it did happen, it makes Lauren look a lot worse. You're telling me you had a legal girl you can date and have sex with and you didn't pursue that? You went to go have sex with a child instead? Doesn't look too good, does it, Lauren? When Lauren cheated on Ramona with Michelle Simpson, it didn't really make a lot of sense to me. I mean, Ramona is the closest thing Lauren will ever have to a real relationship, so why would he cheat right then and there on Ramona? The answer is probably opportunity. He had someone there in Maine who wanted to fuck him, so he went for it. Sorry, I'm not perfect. I'm messed up. Or not, uh, most of us aren't perfect, but most of us aren't um, soliciting sex online and, and doing those things. Not being perfect means you're making lunch and you accidentally spill the soup. That's not being perfect. Spilling the soup and essentially cheating on your girlfriend are two completely different things. Oh, I didn't cheat on What's your definition of cheat? I had, I had no intention of going to meet her. You know, I, I, shouldn't have even, I shouldn't have even talked to her. In that sense, I did cheat on you, and I'm sorry. <sighs> Next in line is Casey, and I think Casey was cheated on. I have to go back and check my notes, and then I'll put in the call if need be. But I do know that Lauren was trying to do some weird stuff with Ramona at the time because he was still in contact with Ramona while dating Casey. I've hey, always well, you said, better get no this fucking janitor away up. from you. No matter how fucked up it is, I've always just said it. And then I hear this from Kate. From Kate. From Kate, Word a fucking girl I never mouth. fucking met. You wanted to. The one that you told me and that you, you did, that you wanted me to meet. You weren't going to say I told her to go ahead and come up here and meet me and show me you're a real person. That's not all That's you what said. I said to Kate. That's not all you said, because I heard you. That is not all I, that is I all I, that's point. all I fucking said that was really of any importance. I never said I anything sexual to her. Just be honest. That's I told her I had a girlfriend. Nothing was going to happen. That's and what and I told you her. Said, and you said, don't post this on the internet. 
Yeah, I just don't fucking post. Nervous. I'm not going to tell her. I told her, her don't her. post anything I say on the internet. I told her, don't post anything I say on the internet. Mm-hmm. And then after that, because you said. Because I'm tired of being recorded and put on the internet. Seeing, the girl I'm seeing doesn't need to know either. I'm not going to tell her. That That's shit that said. I didn't say. Yes, you did. That is shit that I. No, bullshit. It's your voice, stupid asshole. Oh, man. Yeah, and I, you know, and I totally, you know, Casey, I totally, you know, have a lot of respect for you. And, um, you know, I I was not going to let him break up with you and get back with me. Um, you know, I just wanted you guys to work things out. He wanted to get back with you? I mean, but it, it's not going to happen, like, because you guys are together. <laughs> <sighs> no, it, no, it's not. He wanted to get back with her. It, it's that he wanted somebody to talk to him because you wouldn't talk to me. Did I say the wrong thing? Oh my gosh, did I say the wrong thing? Bye. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Told you I'm not hiding anything from you. <laughs> she just said you were trying to get back with her. No. Yeah. It's okay, Lauren. Well, if that's what you wanted, that's it's okay. It's not okay. But what you're thinking is not okay. Yeah, but you were just... You would not talk to me. And okay, I was so very I confused. And then, so you, you wanted to get back with you her. Would you were thinking about me. it, though. I was thinking about it because you weren't talking to me. Okay, that's all that I needed to know. You were going to get back and to me. And I, I was very confused. And she I was said very no. confused about what I was very confused about what was going on. Winnie definitely got the worst end of the stick because Lauren decided to cheat on Winnie with her daughter. And then I think he cheated on her with Debbie. And if he didn't, then it's still a little bit sketchy that he got with her sister after dumping her. I want to try it with Debbie. Are you okay with that? I can make sure I don't waste the way here alone before I buy it. No, it's one thing you're not going to be as long. And my now is road dog. I actually got to spend some decent time with Rhoda the last couple of days. And it just bothers me that she's 18. What age would you like her to be? Well, if she was Debbie or Winnie's age, it would be a lot better. Yeah. But she does act mature. Now, between the, the three of them, who do you think you want the most? No, um, I don't know. It's toss up between Debbie and Rhoda. I don't want Winnie anymore. Really? Tired of her shit. You guys yeah. were, were so good together, though. Uh, well, we were until, until she fucking did her drugs again and did the shit the other night that she did a road of that, that just turned me right off. Debbie and Lauren never dated, so we can continue forward. And when it comes to Jamie, Amy, and Blue Boys Casey, I'm not really sure on what happened there. I know there was some weird stuff with a thruple, uh, weird stuff, but I don't know anything about that. TODR, Lauren has a pretty long history of cheating and it's disgusting. All right, I had a few more video ideas that I written down, but I didn't get a chance to record them. So here we go. We're going to run through them right now. First off is the beauty in Ramona. Just like the beauty in Winnie, it was going to be a video talking about how great Ramona is. We all know why Ramona is pretty great. She was the first one to show us a side of Lauren that we weren't pervy to before. That side being a very abusive partner. We got some really great moments, some really funny moments. What I like the most about the Ramona saga is that it feels a lot more grounded and real. Things, of course, do get a little bit crazy, but not as crazy as the others further on. Really, the only complaint I can think about Ramona right now is that maybe she takes a little bit longer to get to the punch. Like, she's definitely slow in her approach when it comes to Lorne. But I think that's a good thing because we have to have that. At least one person had to at least try to get through to Lorne. And only after we figured out that it's all pointless did things get very, very crazy. I also really like the fact that Ramona, Debbie, and Blue Boy's Casey to an extent tried to break Lorne out of the catfish. 
Like with Winnie, it's just insanity. Like Lauren, if you're going to stay here, then things are going to be crazy and you're just gonna have to deal with it. But at the end of the Ramona saga, Ramona really tried her hardest to get Lauren to date other women. But of course, all of those tries were fruitless. I don't know, I just really like Ramona and it's hard to hate her. Of course, all comedy comes in three. So the next video is The Beauty in Roy, where I talk about how great Roy is. Problem is, I don't really know that much about Roy. I only was interested in Lauren. Casey does really like to hype up Roy, and I always found it interesting how Lauren really didn't like Roy, despite Roy being one of the only people that can tolerate him. Both of those two ideas weren't made because I just didn't have the time. Lauren, the movie. Less of a video idea and more of just thoughts I had in my head that I wanted to jot down somewhere. A really long time ago, I talked about how the catfishing story could be turned into some sort of TV or Netflix show. In that video, I think I deemed it impossible to make like a good TV show out of Lauren because everything happens in his trailer. But I did some more thinking and I think I have a good idea. Lauren the movie would be less of a movie and more of a short film. The entire movie would take place from Lauren's perspective. We would never leave Lauren's side. Basically, the entire movie would be a build up to the fact that A, all of the relationships that he's been in have been over the phone, and B, the only reason why his life is so hard and terrible is because he tried to have sex with a child. And we would spoon feed these ideas little by little throughout the movie. In the beginning, we see Lauren go throughout his day. Maybe he's working on his shed, maybe he's out driving truck, doesn't matter. He's on the phone and he's talking to a catfish, really doesn't matter who, and the catfish doesn't seem interested at all. We'll get a few scenes with him in probation, but he doesn't really explain why he's in probation. It's always him trying to skirt past and not admit what he did. Soon things start to ramp up, he starts getting into more and more abusive fights with his catfish on the phone. There'll be scenes where he's walking through town and people are just repulsed by him or try to keep away from him. Another good idea is have it more like a Groundhog Day type of situation. So he wakes up and he does the same thing, but it's always a different catfish he's talking to. And like I said, all of this would build up to the fact that he's being catfished and he's been being catfished. All the women are catfish. And I haven't figured out how we would reveal that he is a registered sex offender, nor have I thought about like the story or if there would be a plot. These are just ideas I came up with that I wanted to share. I come up with stupid ideas like this all the time. And speaking of stupid ideas, here is Lorne the video game. This idea came from my Lauren stream I did a couple months back, but I actually sat down and thought of a really, really cool game. In my mind, a Dead by Daylight type of game would perfectly fit a Lauren environment. So here's the idea I came up with. You play as Kayla or some other very small child. You are outside Lauren's trailer and you realize that Lauren is somewhere alone in the woods looking for you. Your goal is to find parts to repair his truck to drive away and not get caught by Lauren because that would be very, very bad. I think this would make an awesome game. Firstly, what's more scarier than being chased by like a pedophile in the woods? That's, that's some real scary stuff right there. Plus, our main character is between the ages of 12 and 13, so Lauren would look huge and like an actual monster running in the woods. Not only that, but I think the best part of the game would be the references. For example, I'd make it so you can walk inside the trailer and check things out. Maybe you'll see probation papers scattered across the floor. Or maybe the TV will flicker on and it'll show a random Lauren stream, or one of Bay Shaman's videos, or better yet, the actual TCAP segment of Lauren. Not only that, but some of the mechanics in the game can also be references to Lorne. For example, maybe a way you can keep Lorne away from you while you're running in the woods is by placing a scarecrow type dummy for Lorne to be distracted by and attack that instead of you. And the dummy could look like Chris Hansen, so he goes and attacks the dummy and not you, but he'll get more aggressive after attacking the dummy. Or you can have audio tapes, and you can use those audio tapes to either lure Lorne away from you, or you can use them to calm him down if he's angry. And those audio clips can just be Kayla voice clips. I don't know, I actually think this game has a lot of potential. Which is why I'm telling you so you can go make it right now. Another video that's not a video, but actually a question, and a question I want to pose to you. If every catfishing relationship Lauren had was real, when would be the point where the women would break up with Lauren? The relationships Lauren have with these women are very, very crazy and very, very toxic. But when's the good jumping off point? When was it too much for these women to say, nope, you know what, I'm done? When did it become one red flag too many? For Ramona, there was a lot of times where it was reasonable for her to break up with Lauren. For example, when Lauren cheated on her. But to me, Ramona gives off the vibe that she would just deal with it because it's all happening to her. Lauren was doing everything to her, so she's the one who can deal with it and move forward. 
One thing Ramona definitely wouldn't tolerate though is abuse happening towards her friends or family because she's very protective of them. That's why I think Ramona would break up with Lorne when Lorne was attacking the doctor for helping Ramona's very ill grandmother. The hatred that Lorne has for the doctor has been building up and it blows up in this one moment where Ramona is just trying to get help for her ill grandmother who's like 93 and the doctor is a good friend and close by so he helps her. And Ramona would not stand for Lorne bashing her and her grandma so this would be a deal breaker. Lorne? My grandmother is 96 years old, okay? My grandmother has a multitude of health stemming from being 96 years old. She's almost 100 Does years old. Does she have a daughter? Does she have a daughter? She does. And is that daughter your fucking friend that is always around you that you just spent with? Is he her daughter? He is no. not. No. But why are you on the phone with him for two fucking hours? That stupid fucking bullshit. Casey was a bit harder to think of one because things definitely ramp up. But I think when Lauren starts to use her abuse against her is when it goes downhill. When Lauren and Casey were dating, Lauren really liked to both throw the abuse that Casey has been through at Casey and also use it to fight with her father. And Casey wouldn't stand for that because it'd just be too much. Do you want me or do you want your dad? Because you want your dad, you can fucking have him. If you want me, you can have me. He loved me first. Oh, yeah, loved you first. That motherfucker deserves to be in prison. Why are you yelling at me about it? Because you're not a fucking serious. Am I not a victim? Why are you yelling? You are so much a fucking victim. Why are you not standing up for yourself? I am standing up to you. Really? Right With a six million dollar house? At me. You're yelling at me. With a six million dollar house wrapped around your ass. You're yelling Who at me. Who cares about fucking money? You're yelling at me. You have integrity. You care about you. You think it'd be pretty hard to find a place where Winnie would break up with Lorne because Winnie is the female Lorne and both of them would die before actually breaking up with each other. But I actually think I found a place. Just like Lorne, Winnie is very very loyal in a very toxic way. All you need to do is show her a little bit of affection and she'll stick to you even when you start shitting on her. And this is just like Lorne because right now we're listening to Blue Boy's Casey shitting on Lauren and Lauren's just sitting there taking it because I mean what else is he gonna do? He's not gonna break up with her. They've had too many good times and Lauren is toxically loyal to her. The only way for Winnie to break up with Lauren is for Lauren to break this loyalty and I think he does that when Winnie fakes her stroke and then tries to get with her sister. After running this little experiment she figures out that Lauren didn't actually care for her so she goes off and does whatever she wants and that's the end of their relationship. When I came out of the coma Everybody is paying attention to me. So I still pretended to be sick. And I stopped eating so I could get hot and skinny in case my plan wouldn't work to see if you really loved me. I was moved out of California. I'm over here in a place I don't fucking know where I am. I hate my fucking sister. And I needed to know if you loved me. You proved it. I was in the hospital. I was so what I was doing drugs the whole time. So what I was having a little bit of heart palpitations from all of the heroin and everything, all of the coke and everything. Victor did not even know the packages he was delivering me from the dude up the street, what were in them. And now I know you love my sister. I don't give a fuck. I wanted to see if you wanted to be true to me. I was sick a little bit. I had kidney failure. I came back. I'm fine. I was in a coma because I did too many drugs. And now that I realized I could get rent free housing at the hospital is fine but now i know what the real thing is happening it's you and i'm gonna go be with somebody who really loves me not you bitch and you can fuck my sister i don't care i hate you and i hate her nah. lauren and debbie never dated so let's modify the question a bit debbie saw lauren more like a little project to see if she can actually get to lauren so the question is when would debbie drop lauren as a project this one is pretty simple because it happened right when Lauren went to jail. 
When Lauren went to jail, it's cemented in Debbie's mind that there is no changing Lauren. He's going to stay like this forever, so the project is over and she leaves. I make it like your life decisions are going to have an impact on me, and they're not going to. I'm going to hear that you got arrested for DUI. I'm going to say, haha, what an asshole. And then I'm going to go to the beach. No, you not. Yeah, I will. Do you think I'm going to sit at home and cry? Are you serious? You're going to be upset. No, I won't, is what I'm telling you. My life is going to be perfectly fine. You're going to be sitting in jail. So be it. All right, whatever. Okay. I mean, you can try to make it as if that's not the way that it's going to be. Your decisions are going to have an impact on your life, not mine. I'm not going to be sitting there, oh my God, I hope he's okay. Because I'm not going to give a shit. No, I know you're fucking lying. You You put yourself there is what I'm saying. I don't have any control over your actions. If you decide to disregard everything that I've tried to help you with and you go and do this again and you get yourself arrested, I don't give a shit. Go and do that. My life is going to go on. My days are going to be just how I want them to be. Jamie Amy is definitely the hardest to think about because I haven't heard all the calls yet. But let's just say that it's when Lauren starts attacking her business. Jamie Amy really likes to do her cam shows and at the beginning of their relationship, Lauren was not down for that. So that will end their relationship very quickly. I've had a gangbang on film Lauren. 10 guys. Don't give a fuck. That was then, this is now. The shut up, it's my job, you dipshit. That was then, this is now. Oh now I have to change my job for you. How about for us? Fuck off. Oh gee. So sorry that I'm asking you so much. So sorry that I'm asking so much because we're we're gonna do whatever. And I know too little about Blue Boy's Casey to really answer that question sadly. I don't know what to call this section, but these videos were technically already made so I kinda want your opinion on something. Last year during Lormus, I really enjoyed some of the videos I made, like going over some of the literature in Lornography or talking about Lauren's lawsuits. I then thought about more videos like that I can make for the Legacy of Cod, some I will be making when next Lormus rolls around. The problem with making videos for the Legacy of Cod series that are similar to that nature is because I don't just want to make a video about anything. Like the Legacy of Cod should be introducing or explaining a part of Lornography that may be lost to time or people don't understand clearly. And I think there's a lot of videos like that I can make. Lornography is like a fractal image. The more you zoom in, the bigger it gets and it never stops. Problem is, I just can't think of any. So if you have a good idea of what you think would make a good Legacy of Cod video, put it down in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. Hopefully you guys come up with some good ideas or I come up with some more on my own. That way I don't have to make a Legacy of Cod every Lormus. I'd love to just make one when I get bored. And now we come full circle. Lauren Armstrong, the best story ever written. This video was going to explain the entire catfishing story from Emma all the way to Debbie. The reason why I didn't make it was because I did make it. It's now my Lauren Armstrong, the Legacy of Cod series. But there's kind of an interesting story on how it came to be, so I might as well tell it. Right when I was getting into Lornography and listening to a bunch of phone calls, I really wanted to piece them all together and figure out what the story was. It was strange to me that these calls have been out for quite a while, but no one's pieced them together. People even kept getting Debbie and Casey confused, and I thought, hey, what if I just made a quick video summarizing them all? The video wasn't going to be quick, it was going to be like 2 hours long, but that was my goal. I wanted to make a definitive catfishing timeline. So that's what I started doing. I started casually listening to phone calls, and in the meantime, why not make some Lauren videos and give my thoughts on some ideas I came up with. After doing this for a while, I ended up making a video where I read a letter that Lauren received during the catfishing of Ramona. A good friend of mine who kept up with my stuff said that he really enjoyed that video, but he had no idea what was going on. That really stuck to me, so I decided to start a list of videos I was going to make, and the first one was the best story ever written, a video where I just quickly explained the catfishing stuff. When I started doing my research, however, I realized that Lauren's life has been documented ever since he's been a child, so I decided why not make a full series about it. I started listening to more and more and more phone calls, even when I was working I remember just listening to a ton of phone calls. I hammered out a script, got through some painful editing with my terrible computer, and I made the Legacy of Cod. What a nice trip down memory lane this video was. 
thank you for watching. This one was definitely a bit out of bounds because I don't really talk about Lauren unless it's Lauren Miss, but I really wanted to talk about Lauren, so I talked about Lauren. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope I made your day a little bit less boring, and I'll see you whenever I decide to upload my next video, which hopefully should be soon.